Hello, everybody. Um, today, uh, things are looking a little bit different, and I'll get into why in a little bit. But for now, I just want to start off really heavy, uh, doing the Jesus is uh, Calling devotional for today, and it's just April 10th. They didn't necessarily know it was going to be Good Friday on April 10th because Easter changes because of how they align Passover. Um, so yeah, April 10th. Trust in me every detail of your life. Nothing is random in my kingdom. Everything that happens fits into a pattern for good to those who love me. Instead of trying to analyze the um, in, in whatever the in can't say that word Blah. Um, of the pattern focus your energy on trusting me and thanking me at all times nothing is wasted when you walk close to me even your mistakes and sins can be recycled into something good through my transforming grace while you were still living in darkness I began to shine the light of my presence into your sin-stained life. Finally, I lifted you up on the mire into the marvelous light. Having sacrificed my very life for you, I can be trusted in every facet of your life. Uh, that's based off of uh, four Bible verses. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Jeremiah 17, 7. Romans 8, 28. We are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into plan for good to those, for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. Romans 8, 28. Then Psalms 42, he drew me up of a horrible pit, a pit of tum tumult and of destruction, out of the miry clay, forth and slime, and set my feet upon a rock, steadying my step and establishing my goings. These are all, a lot of these are written in uh, vers versions I don't read often. Um, and then lastly, 1 Peter uh, 2 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his holy special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So that is um, April 10th, Jesus calling. And uh, it doesn't seem like we have a ton of people on just yet. It says two people are watching, but they didn't pop up. So um, uh, before we get to you know some of the big things I have planned today, we're going to read uh, the Proverbs as well for today, Proverbs 10. And we're going to stick with that. Uh, even today, and even on Sunday, <laughs> um, still going to stick through with the devotional, the reading time, even though this is... This is a special time. So Proverbs 10, starting at verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise child brings joy to a father. A foolish child brings grief to a mother. Tainted wealth has no lasting value, but right living can save your life. The Lord will not let the godly go hungry, but refuse to satisfy the cravings of the wicked. Lazy people are soon poor. Hard workers get rich. A wise youth harvests in the summer, but one who sleeps during the harvest is a disgrace. The godly are showered with blessings. The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. We have happy memories of godly memories of the godly, but name of a wicked person rots away. The wise are glad to be instructed, but babbling fools fall flat on their faces. 
people with integrity walk safely, but those who follow crooked paths will be exposed. People who wink at wrong causes uh, cause trouble, but a bold reproof promotes peace. The words of the godly are life-giving, are a life-giving fountain. The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. Hatred stirs up quarrels, but love makes up for all of, uh, offenses. Wise words come from the lips of people with understanding, but those who lack a sense will be beaten with a rod. That always sounds fun. Uh, wise people treasure knowledge. But the babbling fool invites disaster. The wealth of the rich is their fortress. The poverty of the poor is their destruction. The earning of the godly uh, enhance their lives, but evil people squander their money on sin. People who accept discipline are on the pathway to life, but those who ignore correction will go astray. Hiding hatred makes you a liar. Slandering others makes you a fool. Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. The words of the godly are like sterling silver. The heart of a fool is worthless. The words of the godly encourage many, but fools are destroyed by their lack of common sense. Ah, oh, sorry. I am getting a phone call. That is now hung up. I was like, why did my voice just get weird in my ears? Um, the blessing. Uh, the words of the godly encourage many, but fools are destroyed by their lack of common sense. The blessing of the Lord makes a person rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Doing wrong is fun for a fool, but living wisely brings pleasure to the sensible. The fears of the wicked will be fulfilled. The hopes of the godly will be granted. When the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. Lazy people in, irritate their employees like vigor to the teeth or smoke in the eyes. Fear of the Lord lengthens one life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. The hopes of the godly result in happiness, but the expectations of the wicked come from nothing. The way of the Lord is a stronghold to those with integrity, but it destroys the wicked. The godly will never be disturbed, but the wicked will be removed from the land. The mouth of the godly person gives wise advice, but the tongue that deceives will be cut off. The lips of the godly speak helpful words, but the mouth of the wicked speak perverse words. Um, and 10.25 refers back to or refers forward uh, to Luke 6 46 and 49 Jesus emphasizes the importance of building a strong foundation that will allow our house to withstand storms that crush us to crash over us we build that foundation when we come to him listen to his teachings follow it this <clears throat> sorry this he says is like laying the foundation on solid rock um, and then 20 10 25 when the storms of life come the wicked are whirled away but the godly have lasting foundation um, one of the other things that uh, kind of stuck out to me is the words of the godly are like sterling silver and the heart of a fool is worthless um, that just I don't know kind of made me think of the like we were talking a lot about marriage earlier on but uh, if you're single and you're searching and you're trying to win over uh, the heart of a fool he's saying that there's no value in that that's one of the that's one of the things I was getting from that but devotions are are kind of done today though is a very very special day. It's actually perhaps my favorite day of the whole year because today is Good Friday, the original Black Friday. Um, so 
in the last few weeks from Sunday to today, we've been talking a little bit about um, Holy Week and what it was and how these crowds of people that were cheering him on were slowly breaking down and then it got to the point where Judas betrays Jesus with a kiss and there's chaos and these people that were willing to die for Jesus ran away even to the point of running away naked and then the people that arrest him bring him uh, to the to Pontius Pilate and Pilate's wife is all freaking out like don't do anything with them and Pilate's kind of like well I gotta do the law I gotta I gotta do this and then well it's Passover and um, Pilate ends up gathering all of like these people and he's like I have this guy this murderer Barnabas Barabbas something like that and I got Jesus who he's like Jesus has done pretty much nothing he brings him out he's like this guy is evil he's violent he's like this is such a clear obvious choice on who to let free that um you know, I can get away with not killing Jesus because they're going to want to kill this um, violent murderer. They're going to want to, they're going to want to, like, I'm giving them an easy option. It's not a 50 50, it's like a 99 for this killer, and like a 1% are going to want this Jesus guy. Like, it's going to be a no brainer. I don't have to deal with it. I can follow through with what my wife said, and things are going to be good. We're going to continue that story. In a second but one of the things you might realize is I'm in a bit of a different place and that is on purpose I have this cross here Ugh. and this is also for a purpose uh, usually today on Good Friday uh, myself and a giant group of people get together and we carry the cross through town uh, I'm gonna, I feel like stepping outside. Ah, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna continue the story from in here. We do this as kind of um, an expression of the faith and it's people from all different churches around town. We gather and we carry the cross through town. Um, so as uh, Pilate ends up doing this and he brings Jesus and Barabbas out to the crowd. He's like, okay, so Barabbas or Jesus? And the crowd starts going crazy. The religious leaders are like, crucify him! Crucify him! And like the crowd just starts going into it. And he's like, okay, yeah, but this guy, he's a murderer. This guy, I don't even know what he did. And you're asking, us, they're just going crazy. Crucify him! And Pilate goes up. He goes, I wash my hands of this man's death. And then the religious leaders are like, that's okay. We'll take the blame for his death, us and our children. And with that, Jesus goes. He gets beaten. He gets uh, whipped. And then he has to take his cross. And as soldiers are mocking him, as soldiers are whipping him, he has to carry his cross. But here's one of the beautiful things, not me kneeling down to get through the door, although <clears throat> I do have to. Here's one of the beautiful things. As they're walking, They come across this guy. His name is Peter. Whew. It's cold and loud out here. They come across this guy named Peter. Simon, sorry, Simon. And uh, he's, Jesus in his beaten down state. He's not necessarily strong enough to be able to carry the cross on his own. 
he, Jesus isn't strong enough. And they get this guy, Simon, to carry the cross. Simon was just a servant. He was just a guy out and about. And soldiers are like, we don't want to touch him. We don't want to help him. You do it. You help carry this cross because this guy's too weak. And he helps. Jesus carries his cross through the city as people watch on. People cheer. People spit. People are like, yeah, he's getting what he deserves. As he carries the cross through the town of these people that just on Sunday were like, you are going to be our savior. You're going to rescue us. You're going to heal us. You're going to bring us back from the dead. And now they're chanting and cheering as he's beaten, barely recognizable as a human, takes his cross with the help of Simon. As he takes his cross, he carries it up the Mount of Golgotha, the the mountain of the skull, that I'm pretty sure it overlooked the city, or you can see it from a lot of places in the city. Never been to, to the location myself, so I don't really know. Um, and they shove the cross into the ground well they don't shove it into the ground yet they lay it on the ground the people all gather around the Roman soldiers are mocking them they take these nails these nine inch nails they place it upon his skin And with a giant hammer, they start hammering away. Nailing Jesus' broken body to a cross. Creating even more suffering, more humiliation, more bloodshed of this innocent man. And then they slowly rise it up. Nails in his arms. Nails in his feet. And then they start bargaining for his clothes. As Jesus is up on the cross, as Jesus is bleeding, hungry, starving, in more pain than I could ever imagine. They're mocking him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They had more pain to injury. There's a sign upon Jesus' uh, Jesus' cross that says, King of the Jews. And the people are like, ha ha, yeah, no, say he said it was King of the Jews. And Pontius Pilate is like, I've said what I've said, and that's what's staying on there. Because I believe this guy. And then this all happens around 9 in the morning and the sky gets dark from noon until 3 it wasn't just Jesus alone there though Jesus had had two other people with him the people are mocking but then there's this guy on his left and this other guy on his right. I can't remember which one's which right now. I left my Bible behind. And uh, the one thief is like, hey, if you're really who you say you are, why don't you save others? You, sa- or you saved others, why don't you save yourself? If you really are who you say you are, get yourself down from the cross. Just get yourself down. Save yourself. Now you can't really, can you? And the other robber, the other thief goes, shut up. We know what we did was wrong. And yeah, we're getting the punishment that we deserve. But this is a, this is an innocent man. Jesus. 
Remember me. Remember me when you step into your glory. And Jesus says, I will. I'm going to stay. I will. And the robbers, they still are up there. They're checking. The crowd's getting a little bit bored. They're like, Jesus, you're taking too long. Die already. Oh, I think I have the timing of this wrong, even though I just, <laughs> I just reread it. Um, Jesus looks up and he says, One, he asks God to forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And two, he says it is finished as he comes down. His heart has given out through all of the pain and anguish, blood loss, thirst. They were going to break his legs. And right, but no. His heart gives up. They're going to break his legs so that he would suffocate. As his lungs filled with blood, but no. Oh, no, the cross fell. Um, but no. It was a broken heart that ended up killing Jesus. And I always think, I've, ever since finding that out, I've always thought that was really poetic. So today, yeah. I walk with the cross. Normally, I'd walk with a group of at least 300 through the middle of town, remembering what Jesus did for us on that Black Friday. It's like a funeral procession for us because we know that our God chose to come down and die, but it's also so full of hope because Sunday's coming. As I said in Batman, the dawn is always darkest. Or the night is always darkest before the dawn. This is humanity's darkest moment. But Sunday is coming. The religious leaders are like, hey. He said that he was going to rise himself from the dead in three days. So let's put something in front of his grave. Let's, let's seal it. So that his disciples can't come in and be like, hey, look, he totally raised from the dead like what he said he was, but really they just stole his body and hid it. So not only do they seal it, they put guards on it. And the rest I will share later. But, and you know what's coming. You know that Sunday's coming. You know that he did not stay there. But, I, um, but yeah, it is finished. When he said it is finished, one of the other really cool things that ended up happening was there's this room in the temple where God apparently dwelt. And the way to get into that ripped. The sky that was dark, oh, yeah, the... Uh, mixing up things up. So the sky that uh oh it's cold out here. The sky um ah well that wasn't fun. Um yeah the the thing to the inner room fell apart. Signifying that God God no longer dwells just in the temple, but the Holy Spirit is now coming out. The Holy Spirit can connect us all. Jesus actually said, from soon I will be gone, but then someone is coming after me. Someone, it's so much better for you to have what's coming after. And what was coming after was the Holy Spirit. It is kind of cold. And later on, we're asked to pick up our cross daily. layer burdens at the foot of the cross. Jesus died 
for us to be redeemed, to be reunited, reconnected with the Father. For me, for me, today, Black Friday, Easter Sunday, this is bigger than Christmas. Because without this, my faith would be completely meaningless. Without this, any Christians that are watching me, their faith would be completely meaningless. The Bible even calls it out. Now, Christmas, as I was standing right next to some Christmas lights, I picked that spot for a reason. Uh, Christmas is great. And we really, really lift that up in our culture, but it's also turned into this, a lot of marketing, a lot of, you know, things that don't really represent God. Easter, it's about chocolate. It's about an Easter running, which I still don't really get, but when you uh, hide the chocolate and stuff like that, that's actually a reference to like a Jewish uh, thing that they used to do where they used to hide uh, unleavened bread. Ugh! But Jesus isn't hiding. He's not. Uh, I am really cold. So I want to hide my hands a little bit. But um, yeah, I, I just thank you for joining me for the walk of the cross. I want to pray for you guys. Thank you very much. Have a good Friday. You are all awesome. I know today was a little bit different. Um, Jared, uh, I'm, I'm really happy that you're joining. It's been a long time, man. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think I'm going to sign off because I want to. I want to take a picture with the cross. Um, but yeah, today it's an important day. It's a it's a lovely day. It is possibly it is my favorite thing that the church does all year. Today I got to do it alone, but I'm not doing it alone. Uh, millions and millions of Christians around the world are all happy and they're celebrating today. It's a, it's a mournful day that is full of so much hope for us. It's sad that Jesus had to come and die, but it's awesome that he was willing to do it and that he did. And that even though this might have been humanity's darkest day, where we slayed God, he didn't stay dead. He rose again and invited him, invited us to join him in eternal life. We got reconnected to God in a way that we can't imagine. People are like, this is, this is what I'm going to end with. And I'm going to butcher the quote, but I did quote it yesterday on my Facebook wall. A lot of people are like, how can you follow a God that is like, who came down to earth, got beaten, and got killed by us? How can you follow a God who does that? I don't know how you could follow a God that's not, that's immune to pain. How can he ever relate and help us in our pain if he's never felt that pain before? Not only did he not feel, has he felt the pain, but he willingly embraced it for our sake. Our God is not someone that's so emotionally detached from us that he just sits there in his big comfy cloud and judges us. God chose to come down from heaven to dwell among us, knowing full well that it was going to lead to so much pain, suffering, and abandonment so that we could be redeemed back to him. All right, I'm going to pray for you guys. And for this, uh, going to have a little bit of the cross, a little bit of Jesus' head in there. You know. Ooh, I like that. So if anyone has any prayer requests or anything like that, please let me know. Um, there's a lot of uh, things on this particular paper. Uh, like sin. Death has no sting. It's finished. 
death is your stray. God is alive forever. This little foot thing is where his feet would have been nailed. Obviously, this is not to scale. All right. AJC, awesome Jesus Christ. Thank you so much that we can cling to the cross, that we can cling to your word, that you came down from heaven to die for us, that you were willing to get beaten, to be barely, barely recognized as a human being anymore, that you invited Simon to help carry your cross, that this whole thing isn't you just telling us what to do, but you joining with us in your great purpose. If God is God, why doesn't he do this, that, or the other, and be all powerful, but you constantly invite us to join you, join you on your journey, join you. You're not a God that just sits back and does everything you want, but you're a God that invites us in to do your work with you. Thank you for loving us, caring for us, and like little children to try to help their dad build a shed, we might screw things up time and time again. We may even end up nailing our hand to the wood, but you're there to bandage us up, to help us out, and direct us. Thank you so much for Good Friday. Thank you so much for who you are and what you do. You're awesome, Lord. And I'm for everyone that joins the stream right now and into the future.